Hello, my name is Erin McAdams, and I am an artist here in Corvallis. Today I'd like to talk to y'all about LGBTQ art history. There is a content warning for my talk. Some of the pieces of art that I've included include nudity. There is no way I could give you a complete picture of LGBTQ representation in art history in a short video. I encourage you to use free search engines, museum websites, podcasts, YouTube, or whatever to seek out any art that interests you. It'll inevitably lead you to another artist that you may have never heard of. I've included some of my favorites or artists I've admired, but there's so much out there. Some you may have heard of and some may be brand new to you. LGBTQ artists are often left out of the art history discussion. There are many reasons for this. One is erasure and prosecution. A lot of artists created art that was deeply coded to keep themselves safe. Two, a lot of our definitions of gender and sexuality are fairly modern. Some of the artists we would include in these definitions would not have used these labels for themselves. And third, LGBTQ artists are outside of the mainstream art world. But I think everyone should learn about their contributions. The first artist that I'd like to talk about is Frida Kahlo. Well known for being married to Diego Rivera and her intensely personal self-portraits, Frida Kahlo was a bisexual artist. She painted this piece called Two Nudes in a Forest, or it was also called The Earth Itself. It was created for her girlfriend, actress Dolores Del Rio, and is often said to be about strong female friendships, although they did have a romantic relationship. Francis Bacon and David Hockney are British artists who are known for fearless depictions of male same-sex desire in the 1950s and 60s. They were both considered extremely controversial. Bacon's 1955 exhibition at the Institute of Contemporary Arts was investigated by the police for obscenity, and Hockney once described his early paintings as, quote, homosexual propaganda. This is Two Figures by Francis Bacon on the left, and We Two Boys Together Clinging by David Hockney on the right. There are many examples of art created during the AIDS crisis. Some art was created to express loss and grief, and some to raise awareness. This is a piece by Keith Haring called Ignorance Equals Fear from 1989, Herring died in 1990 of AIDS-related complications. Keith Herring is one of the thousands commemorated in the AIDS Memorial Quilt, which is estimated to weigh 54 tons and is the largest community folk art piece in the world. Grand Fury was an activist art collective formed in the late 1980s as an offshoot of ACT UP. ACT UP stands for AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, and is an international grassroots political group working to end the AIDS pandemic. Grand Fury created this image with the caption, Kissing doesn't kill, creed and indifference do. This is a digital weaving installation from 2015 by artist Indira Allegra. It is called Blackout and studies the weave structure of police uniforms alongside statements made by families of those lost to police violence. It is important to remember the interconnected nature of social categories, categorization such as race, class, and gender as they apply to a given individual or group. Kehinde Wiley's work was described by the Columbus Museum of Art as, quote, heroic portraits which address the image and status of young African-American men in contemporary culture. The paintings are large, incredibly detailed, and reference art history. Wiley was commissioned to paint a portrait of former President Barack Obama for the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery. Along with Amy Sherald's portrait of Michelle Obama, these mark the first time two African-American artists were commissioned by the National Portrait Gallery. The Museum of Trans History and Art was founded in 2013 by artist Chris E. Vargas with the mission of bringing a cohesive visual history of transgender culture into existence. They have a beautiful archive and their collection is always growing and changing. I definitely recommend checking out their website, matha.net. Thank you for your time. Please consider donating to the Mid Willamette Trans Support Network, a local nonprofit run by trans folks in the Willamette Valley. I'll include their info below as well as some websites I use for reference for this talk.